Beware number ones. You can go down to defeat Kentucky and Wake Forest, Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. And welcome to New Orleans Arena. This is the East Region. Number nine, Wake Forest. They won in overtime against Texas. Their 20th win of the year. Number one seed, Kentucky Wildcats have lost only two all year representing the Southeastern Conference. Here's a look at the bracket. East Region, the winner goes on to the Sweet 16 in Syracuse. Cornell and Wisconsin, they'll play tomorrow. The winners of those brackets will meet each other in the Sweet 16. A look at the starting lineups for John Calipari's Wildcats and Dino Gaudio's Wake Forest Demon Deacon. Smith, the hero, hit the shot at the buzzer in overtime to win the other night. Williams, Weaver, Amino, their leading scorer and rebounder, and Chase McFarland, he's the bulk inside. Kentucky with a brilliant freshman of the year in college basketball, John Wall. Eric Bledsoe, who had a career game in the win the other night against East Tennessee State. Miller, Patterson, and uh, more bulk in Cousins. It's the biggest, tallest team in basketball and one of the youngest, Kentucky. They average six, seven, and a half. Tonight's game brought to you in HD TV by LG. Life's good. Kentucky in white. Wake Forest in the black uniforms with Reed, Self, and Hall. The men with the whistles. This is the 50th tournament for this storied program at the University of Kentucky. They're looking for their 100th tournament win. Cousins and Amino jump it. And uh, knocked out of bounds by Cousins. And they're going to re-jump it. Not a very good start there. So L.D. Williams will play it in from the side for the Demon Deacons who struggled at the end of the season but uh, able to pull together a very exciting victory 81 80 over Texas in overtime on Thursday night. Freshman Eric Bledsoe guarding Ish Smith. They go right inside to Al Farouk Aminu. And he's able to score between two of those tall Kentucky Towers. And Smith, the speedy point guard from Wake Forest, matching speed on speed, guarding John Wall. A wall much taller, four inches. Chase McFarland and Cousins are already going at it. McFarland, big and strong, is going to go right at Cousins, see if he can frustrate him. Let's go back out to Miller, and Miller tries the three. Covered by Smith. Is Smith. He hit the winner of the other night, and he feeds Weaver, who starts as a senior. Did not get that many uh, starts on the season, but it was the thought of Gaudio. Those are going to advance here. The seniors would have to lead, and Weaver gets a start, and there's the first foul on Chase McFarland. Well, you can see McFarland and Cousins going right at it, and McFarland, a little bit of an instigator. He does not mind contact. He will go after DeMarcus Cousins, and Cousins has shown a little bit of a short fuse in his freshman season. But Wake Forest trying to get up and down the floor as quickly as possible. They do not want to play against Kentucky's half-court defense. They want to make this a transition game where they don't have to think, they don't have to run a lot of sets, where they can make it an up-and-down game. One of the three freshman starters for Kentucky. And Cousins misses both charities. 4 nothing. Wake Forest and the ball. But so a very good on-ball defender. He's got a real challenge staying in front of Ish Smith. Smith hitting McFarland. Cousins defends and the foul called. Marcus Cousins has gotten in foul trouble throughout his career. That foul going on John Wall. Cousins has to be careful not to pick up some cheap ones. McFarland uh, needs to buy a vowel. C H A S Chase. McFarland, seven footer. McFarland's game is to be physical. He's experienced. He plays the offensive glass very effectively. But what he really wants to do is bang bodies. He does a very good job of it. 59% shooter on the season, but he hits both. And Wake Forest jumps out to a 6-0 lead. Now, Kentucky tried their first play to back screen Patrick Patterson down into the low post, but David Weaver did a very nice job with his size of taking that away. Wall having trouble. Finally dumps it to the side to Miller. Farland did a nice job helping on that ball screen. 
Miller slicing inside, and he has Kentucky's first basket. Darius Miller, a sophomore from Maysville, Kentucky. Quick pass down to McFarland, and could not extricate himself from some tight defense. Cousins. Wake Forest can get the ball up court quickly. That means that Kentucky, after a score, still has to get back and be smart. Weaver, McFarland is alone and scores. Just a simple little flex cut along the baseline. DeMarcus Cousins not doing a good job of bumping Chase McFarland to keep him from cutting low and blasting off that little flex screen. Making all the All-America teams throws it away to Weaver. And Smith, one of the fastest men in basketball to Aminu. Lost control. He's denied by Cousins. What a block. 6-9 against 6-11. 6-11 wins. And meeting at the summit. And Wall at the other end nails the three. Well, Kentucky is an outstanding shot blocking team. And Marcus Cousins. Patrick Patterson, Daniel Orton, they go after the ball. That was a great block. No team has shot 50% against Kentucky this year. Amino moves outside to hit the rainbow. Same play, just on the other side of the floor. And after Aminu set the screen, Patrick Patterson so worried about McFarland getting the layup. Aminu was just able to pop up top. Kentucky's got to do a better job of guarding that action. That is simple basketball action. Just a simple flex cut. Wall, an easy opening for the three. Cousins. And that's going to be a foul against Wake Forest. And Cousins went after that with both hands. Aminu trying to battle with Cousins, and he draws the foul. An outstanding offensive rebounder. Maybe the best offensive rebounder in the country, DeMarcus Cousins. He goes out, and another big body comes in. It's Daniel Orton, 6'10", freshman from Oklahoma City. Miller, nice move to the basket, and he has his second field goal. Hesitated in the air to get away from that shot block. That was a really nice play. That's two middle drives that Wake has given up to Darius Miller. Amino could not get around Patterson. Tries to get in the lane. That's going to be against Amino. And that's two quick fouls on the star player for Wake Forest. And we've not yet played four minutes. He just dropped that left shoulder. Anytime you drop that shoulder, even though he had the angle, that's going to be an offensive foul. That was a good call. Amino stays in for the moment. Patterson had a big game the other night. Wall working the baseline and bounced it on the baseline. Out of bounds to Wake Forest. Four minutes into the game. Wake Forest by three. Back in the Big Easy, CBSSports.com covers every moment of the madness. Get the latest expert analysis and updates, plus live scoring and stats from every game, all at CBSSports.com. Now there are t-shirts around the city that say Blue Orleans because there's so much Kentucky blue and well spotted throughout this New Orleans arena. Great support. They said in the SEC championships in Nashville, there's some 80,000 Kentucky fans. Only uh, seats for around 20,000, but they just wanted to be near the scene. Well, no program in America is better supported by its fans than the University of Kentucky. Wake Forest plays it in. They lead 10-7 early, four minutes into the game. Let's so continue to guard Smith. That is a tough matchup. Smith uh, throws it deflected away by Patterson. Wake Forest has been getting the ball inside. First the high-low between Weaver and Aminu. And then Ish Smith getting into the lane, dishing it off to Weaver, then Chase McFarland off that flex cut. Tony Wake. Woods in now. Jay, the 6'11 sophomore from Rome. Tony Woods, Tony Woods played an outstanding game against Texas. He was all over the offensive glass at seven offensive rebounds. He's in for Aminu. Aminu out with two fouls. He wears 55. Woods. Woods not a scorer. He will score off of drop-offs, but he's the offensive glass. That's what he gets. Another flex cut. Four on the shot clock. And they're going to run just to get the shot away. And Healthy Williams. 
pretty close to making it. Out of bounds to Kentucky. That was very close to not getting off. Actually, I thought it was in his hands when that buzzer went off. Look at Tony Woods. Be countering the size of the Kentucky Wildcats Wooden and Cousins down low. Woods had probably his best game of the season against Texas. He had 11 points and 8 rebounds. Darius Miller pulls up for his third field goal. He has six to lead Kentucky. It's a 10-9 game. He had 18 against Arkansas earlier in the season. He has gotten off to a great start. Wall, a one-man fast break. It's Miller. He's feeling it. That's a three, and Kentucky has the lead for the first time at 12 to 10. It's Miller time in New Orleans. That's going to be a step in on Orton. Foul on the big freshman. Coming into this ball game, Darius Miller had hit 40 three-point shots on the season. But he was one of his last eight from three before drilling that one. He actually got hit on that, but it wasn't called. Miller representing the state of Kentucky. Ten different states on the Kentucky Wildcat roster. Nice job by Miller to come over and stop the ball after Bledsoe gambled for a steal. L.D. Williams cannot hit. Miller with a loose ball. Wall sets up the offense. Nice job by Wake Forest to corral and contain John Wall, even though that was just a mini break. They kept him from getting in the lane and speeding past. Wall resets the offense with 10 seconds on the clock. Wake's done a good job of making Kentucky run half-court offense. Bledsoe's first attempt, he was red hot from three-point range. In the win the other night against East Tennessee State, he had eight for nine from outside the line. He had hit 10 of his last 13 in his last two games. Chase nope. McFarland back in for Wake Forest. And Amino also returns. Aminu has to be smart. He cannot pick up a third foul before halftime. There's 13.40 to play. Shooting down the alley that bang home C.J. Harris's miss. It's tied at 12. Six for McFarland. And that's the risk of shot blockers going after a block shot. You're going to leave the offensive glass open. And Kentucky's got to be judicious. Sometimes a strength can be a weakness. Back pick for Patterson. They call the foul. The foul will be on Patterson. It rained three here two nights ago, Jay. Well, Bledsoe was just on fire. Had 29 points, just a great basketball game. Eight of nine from three. But the problem for the opponent was not making him put the ball on the floor. And Wake Forest has to do a better job than East Tennessee State did. Into Aminu, good catch. And in traffic is able to lay it in. And Wake Forest reclaims the lead. And a nice shot fake down low by Aminu to get... The Kentucky shot blockers off the floor. Darnell Dotson in for the first time. Number three he likes to shoot the three and hits it. 15 14 Wildcats. Darnell Dotson had not been shooting it well coming into this game. What a move. That's going to be goaltending on Orton. Set at the basket to Ishmael Smith, the lightning quick guard for Wake Forest. He spun back into the lane, got that shot up, but Daniel Orton was right. His head was under the basket. I mean, you got you to show a little more maturity than that. I mean, that's just giving two points away. Gary Stewart in for the first time for Wake Forest, number 20. This is Stewart on Bledsoe. John Wall setting a little cross screen to try to free up DeMarcus Cousins. Bledsoe takes it inside and scores plus one. What a move. And he just got low and pivoted right around the defender. Watch the strength of Eric Bledsoe. Look how low he stays. This is a shoulders game, and he keeps his shoulders lower than Ari Stewart and just pivots right around him. Stewart needs to get just as low 
Let's go. Oh, hit 18 in the SEC tournament win that overtime victory over Mississippi State. Way off the mark, but Patterson picks up the loose ball and makes it a four point play. That was with emphasis. That was so far off the free throw for such a great shooter, it almost looked like it was a pass to Patterson. There's that flex cut again along the baseline. C.J. Harris for three, and he ties it at 19 with his first bucket. Harris, a very good shooter. One of the top free throw shooters in the ACC as well. Patterson rattles out. Cousins had the rebound and was fouled. 11.39 left in the opening half. Tied at 19, number one Kentucky and Wake Forest. Tournament update time, Greg Gumbel in New York in Oklahoma City. First half, Nick and Jay, back to you. Greg, very competitive here in New Orleans, 19 all, but bad news for Wake Forest. Their top player, Al Farouk Amino, has just picked up his third foul. The eyes tell it all. He's done for the first half, and there's 11.39 to go. Mark that down, 19-19, Al Farouk Aminu with his third. He will likely sit the rest of this first half, and this is a young man that had 20 points and 15 rebounds against Texas. He is the best offensive player on this Wake Forest team. Patterson misses the three, and then tangled down along the baseline to Kentucky players go down along with the little man, Ish Smith and Tony Woods, and it's Woods ticketed with a foul. That'll be uh, number six on Wake Forest, three committed by Kentucky. So Marcus Cousins is getting bounced all over the floor, and he has kept his cool this entire first half. Cousins, that's how you pay him back. That's his first basket. Forrest does not get the bounce. Cousins feeds Wall. Wall firing down to court, and that's going to be a block on McFarland. And the seventh team foul against Wake Forest. His second. Well, it looked like McFarland was there. The problem is it is so hard for a big guy to draw a charge in transition on a guard. It's almost like your eyes don't want to believe it. It looked like he got there. But it's just so it is so hard to think of. Seven footers that draw charges on six four guards. Just doesn't happen that often. Sound like you have a little bit of venom from your past <laughs> experience <laughs> boiling out. <laughs> yeah, he was there. He was there. Meanwhile, Kentucky looking for its first successful free throw. Is that more size discrimination? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> We could campaign. I've got a few people who <laughs> join us. Three-point lead for the Wildcats. And without Aminu, who's going to pick up the scoring slot? But Kentucky's defense, so good. No angle to make that pass, and a terrific job by Darnell Dodson with his pressure. NCAA March Madness on the band, streaming every game from the NCAA Championship online for free. Watch any game from the tournament live at NCAA.com. And without Farouk Aminu out of the game, this is not a scoring lineup for Wake Forest. Cousins has it knocked away by Woods. Look at that scoop! Oh! And then he misses the slam. Comes all the way into the forecourt to Patterson, who was just watching. And there's a trip and a travel on Wall. A little out of control. Rare time you'll see that. I'll tell you what, I didn't think anybody in college basketball was faster than John Wall, but Ish Smith is. <laughs> What a play by Smith. Just hits the heel of the rim. It's only that, six feet tall. And that served as a heck of an outlet pass. Kentucky almost got something good off of that. Inside to McFarlane. He has six points in this first half. Not that one. And it's out of bounds. Touch there by Ari Stewart of Wake Forest. Kentucky goes the other way. Well, coming into this season with so many young players, everybody being new to John Calipari and his system, one of the things I think he was most concerned about was defense. Calipari's teams have all, when he was at Memphis last few years, have won primarily with defense. And this Kentucky team, as young as it is, has done a terrific job defensively. DeAndre Liggins, 34 in the game for Kentucky. Deep in the corner, and Patterson's tried three threes and missed all three. But he's settling. He can't get anything inside right now. 
four started making their first three attempts, but five for 14 cents. Smith has it blocked from behind, scooped up by McFarland. Trying to get inside on Patterson. And Cousins and Patterson, just a wall of white there, unable to get the shot down. And at the other end, it's DeAndre Liggins for two. Time out, Wake Forest with 9.22 to go. The Cats, 5-5. Five, five. Kentucky, number one team in the nation, showing the defense at one end and shooting 10 for 16 at the other. And they've opened a five-point lead, and they've opened it with the star for Wake Forest, Aminu, on the bench. 11-39 in the first half, Aminu picked up his third foul, and since then, it's Kentucky five, Wake, Wake Forest nothing. Without Aminu on the floor, that takes away a big scoring option for Wake Forest. And someone who's going to occupy a good bit of the Kentucky defense. Right now, not a lot of scoring punch on the floor for Wake Forest. L.D. Williams, hawked by Miller. Now is Smith. Wall on him. L.D. Williams on the switch. Draws Miller. Eight on the shot clock. That's better job by Kentucky defending that flex cut. Three. And with the buzzer sounding, he misses everything, and that's a good Shot violation, clock violation, and Kentucky the other way. They play it tough at both ends of the court. That's why they're one of the four number one seeds. C.J. Harris, terrific shot fake, and had plenty of time to pull the trigger on it, just missed it. And that puts an awful lot of pressure. Not being able to score puts a ton of pressure on your defense to force a shutout or pitch a shutout. Got away with a walk there. He sure did. Down the shot clock, Walls, second Aaron pass, intercepted by Weaver. Sixth turnover. L.D. Williams runs into his own man and then misses the layup. At the other end, Cousins is fouled. Wake Forest just racking up the fouls. Number eight on the Deacons. John Calipari, the first coach ever, five consecutive 30-win seasons. This year, 32 33 and 2 now. A remarkable turnaround at Kentucky. Well, they're, they say they play young sometimes, these freshmen. Yeah, one of the youngest teams in the country. But you know, in Kentucky, you've got to be young to win the big one, the Kentucky Derby. It's only for three year olds. Apes doesn't help you there. But the problem is, in the Kentucky Derby, they're running against other three year olds. These guys are playing against, at times, some older teams. I mean, the game is much younger now. Wake Forest fortunate, Tony Woods, the trailer not looking at the ball, and L.D. Williams saved him from the ball going out of bounds. It's good hustle by Williams. Meanwhile, Kentucky, their only weakness shown today, they're only one for seven free throws. Smith on the scooper, and here comes Kentucky breaking out three on one. Let's go to Cousins. Seven point lead. 7-0, the scoring since Amino picked up his third foul. And with Kentucky scoring, Wake Forest has to go against their half-court defense. Wake has to get a stop so he can get something in transition. See a blue across the way, including Ashley Judd, the most famous of Kentucky fans. And they love what they see. Oh, it took a fortuitous bounce and then a long shot keeps it alive by C.J. Harris and Weaver then with a long rebound. That's the closest Wake has come to scoring in the last five minutes. There's confirmation, 7-0 run since Amino's foul. In deep goes Smith and picks up the foul. No, it's C.J. Harris picking up the foul. On the break, watch out for Bledsoe. And then it's Cousins right there to slam it home. He's sticking Jay. Well, Greg, the key issue here for Wake Forest, uh, outmanned by number one Kentucky, and so much more so without Al Farouk Amino, their top scorer and top rebounder, sitting out since the 11:39 mark, and no scoring by any of his teammates since he left the court five minutes ago. 
C.J. Harris with a chance to break the drought. <laughs> and he misses the free throw. That's got to be frustrating. C.J. Harris, only John Shire and Grievous Vasquez, better free throw shooters during the ACC season. Wake Forest has really had a hard time with the half-court defense of Kentucky. They're letting their offense get pushed further out on the floor, and they've got the speed to go by Kentucky, and they've got to start doing that. They've got to start beating people off the dribble, even though Kentucky's good defensively. That's going to be a foul. Darius, man, this is always puzzling to me. Darius Miller goes up with him, but he, he has a shot where he doesn't go straight up. He falls toward the basket, falls into the defensive player. And kind of puts the defense in a bad spot. They get the foul call. Well, that was not a smart play by Ish Smith. Wake Forest went to a 2-3 zone to try to stop penetration, and he got caught on that pass and tried to recover and just bumped him right in the chest. Can't do that. <laughs> There's their number one cheerleader. A popular Ashley Judd. Well, she's there rooting for her cats all season long. And Miller gets three shots on the foul just outside the line looking for his 12th point so many players on this Kentucky roster that can step forward and hurt you near steel and the quickness of Darius Miller not only is Kentucky tall they are so wide their wingspan most all the players have an added six inches on their arm length well, it's the most talented team in America. It's just young. And the only thing that can stop Kentucky is youth. C.J. Harris has the pass to chase McFarland. And McFarland finally a field goal for Wake Forest. That's what Wake has to do. Push the ball up the floor, get easy opportunities in transition. Doesn't have to be a break situation. They do it after a made field goal. Missed by Liggins from three, and down goes Mark DeMarcus Cousins at the other end. Harris then left alone for three, and he misses. L.D. Williams with a putback. Well, L.D. Williams is a very good guard mm -hmm. rebounder. He had a terrific game against Texas. He had nine points, nine rebounds, a couple of blocks, and that big block against Gary Johnson, that dunk he tried late in the game that L.D. Williams sent right back. Wall fires from long range and hits the three. He's such a patient player. You know, it's a, for such a star and great talent, he just waits for his opening. He's very happy dishing and running the show. And when you need a three and it's wide open, why not take it? Thirty-two, twenty-four, and eight points in Kentucky advantage in the pass. Aaron off the hands of McFarland. Well, folks, another decade has passed, and uh, this March, why don't you be sure to fill out your census form and mail it back. Cousins given a breather. Gordon replaces him. But Cousins has really done a good job with his demeanor in this game. It's not easy going up against guys like Chase McFarland, who is about as physical as anybody you're going to play in college basketball. And he has not allowed himself to get into a shoving match or a wrestling match with McFarland. He's just played. Horton inside with that two-pointer. Kentucky is 9 for 10 inside the line. Uh, Kentucky is playing very efficiently in this NCAA tournament. What a pass. And what a block as Perry Stevenson, a starter last year, up to bat it away. Wow. Stevenson and Ramon Harris were starters last year. They're ninth and 10th in terms of the substitution for Kentucky this year. That's how the freshman has taken over. Shows you the talent infusion on this team. Wall gets a screen from Orton and walks in. Well, that was a great read by John Wall. He saw that Chase McFarland was playing Orton on the high side. Great play. Wall with nine. Kentucky fans on their feet. They like what they see. Everyone here in this building is wearing blue. A little nervous when they heard that Kansas upset Northern Iowa winning, and they certainly didn't want that to happen to their team tonight. That was an alarm clock for all the top seeds. Kentucky has been challenging everything up top. The block by Perry Stevenson, then Wall on the other end. McFarland on the high side. Nobody can cut off the baseline. He just blows right by Ishmael Smith. 
Down to the four-minute mark here in the first half in New Orleans. And it moves on to the East Syracuse. Inside Tony Woods, and the putback by Woods of his own miss. His first basket. Woods, a terrific offensive rebounder. He knew right away that he missed that. And did a terrific job with that second jump of getting to the ball uh, first. Inside to Orton. Double team. Taken away for a moment by C.J. Harris, but out of bounds to Kentucky. No, Wade Ferris is going to get the call going the other way. Uh, took a look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight and John Calipari trying to become the fifth coach at, Kincu at Kentucky to uh, win a national title following with Rupp and Joe B. Hall, Patino, and Tubby Smith. That's not happened at any university to even have four different coaches win the title. Many feel that he's got the team to do it. And with the number one of the number ones beaten tonight, Kansas. Folks are even brighter for Wildcat fans. Previous wins, of course, at uh, UMass and Memphis. So close to winning the national title at Memphis a couple of years ago. Lost in an overtime, you'll recall, to Kansas. 25 ago. In the eight minutes that Al Farouk Aminu has been on the bench with three fouls for Wake Forest. The Wildcats have outscored the Demon Deacon 17 to 7. CJ Harris inside with the left hand to cut the lead to eight. That's what they got to do. They've got to penetrate on this team. Blow by them. Off the dribble. Darius Miller, another drive, and su successfully so. Has he missed yet tonight? 14 points for Miller. He's five for six. And a foul at the other end. Kentucky's just able to move the ball from side to side, a little handoff action, and their ability to get the ball into the lane has been impressive. Liggins picks up his first foul, 16 foul on Kentucky. Next foul on Wade will put Kentucky into double bonus. Wake Forest can go into halftime with this lead under 10. Yeah, walking right in, C.J. Harris has the ball filtered, and look at John Wall get down. He is a one-man fast break. Here's the second one-man fast break. Here's Smith. And Smith did a really nice job of challenging that fast break layout by Wall. He forced the miss. Trailing by 10. Wake Forest with a ball. C.J. Harris inside. Out of bounds off Daniel Orton. John Wall, three of five on the game, two of three from three-point range. When he gets his feet set, he is a good jump shooter, and he can certainly get to the rim. Nine points, three assists. The only downside on his stat line has been his turnovers. He averages four a game. He's already reached that average in this one. He's made a couple careless passes. But just a young player, John Calipari, certainly willing to live with a few mistakes. Chase McClellan into the game, but he is denied by Orton. Another block. Kentucky averages over seven blocks a game, and at the other end, quickly, it is uh, Darius Miller with yet another basket, leading the way with 16. That's just too shy of his career high for Darius Miller. And ball lost again by Wake Forest, and then a timeout called by Kentucky to maintain possession. Wall using his head as well as his enormous talent. Forty twenty-eight Kentucky over the ninth seed Wake Forest with just under two minutes to go here in New Orleans. As the Wildcats looking for their sweet 16 ticket in Syracuse. Cornell and Wisconsin play tomorrow and the winner of that game will meet the winner of this one. BYU and Kansas State, a five-point lead for Kansas State at the moment as they're near the end of the half, and we'll have highlights, maybe a look in there at halftime. Wake Forest really has to be smart this last minute 40. They want to fall further behind with Al Farouk Amino on the back. What a pass by Wall that sets up an easy two for Cousins. 
six points for Cousins. He had to cut that one in half. Wall really set the table. Another turnover. Watch out. Here comes the big man. Throw down for DeMarcus Cousins. And that may be the statement that the Wildcats and their fans want as they develop the huge lead and another turnover and a foul. And look who, where Wall was. He was already 15 feet clear down court. What a pass by John Wall. Just a right-handed underhand wraparound and DeMarcus Cousins out in transition with the easy throwdown, but you don't see passes like John Wall through very often. Kentucky outscoring Wake Forest 25 to 9 since the Aminu foul, third foul, put him on the bench. 19-19 with 11.39 to go in the half, and Kentucky has just exploded since Aminu has been on the bench. A team like Kentucky with its depth can afford uh, at times a starter getting those quick three fouls, but Wake Forest with only uh, a limited bench, and Amino, their best player, has really been punishing, and here's another foul, and it's a double bonus for Kentucky. He wants two, does Liggins? He's going to get two anyway, and Amino, sadly, for Wake fans, slumping deeper on that bench. Forty point one seconds before halftime. AT and T in the half. Greg and Greg and Seth will have all the tournament news and of course the big discussion tonight. Not only St. Mary's taking out number two Villanova, but Kansas, the number one of the number one seeds, beaten by two by Northern Iowa, Missouri Valley Conference champion. Ligans misses Woods. Corrals the rebound. About a four second differential in the clocks as Wake Forest trying to finish a disappointing first half with a score. Wake Forest, since Aminu went out, four of 18 from the field. Kentucky falling back in what looks like a little zone configuration, although they are, looks like they're going to go man. Smith with a leaner. Not there. Woods can't get it. Long pass. No, it's Wall with two, with one. It counts as it goes. And that's the end of the half. The Kentucky Wildcats, 44. Wake Forest, 28. We go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Dick, and from... Well, despite DeMarcus Cousins' actions, the Wildcats don't beat themselves. And here in this city of great jazz, it's the Wildcats making some winning music. They lead at the intermission by 60. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. And welcome back to the Crescent City along the Mississippi. Halftime, Kentucky 44-28. Here's the in-game box score powered by CBS College Sports Network. Well, Darius Miller leading the way for Kentucky with his 16 points, six out of seven from the field. Kentucky shooting 67%, and the Wildcat defense has been outstanding, holding Wake Forest to just 36%. And you can watch CBS College Sports Network's continuing coverage of the NCAA tournament. Uh, El Farouk Aminu, who did not play the last 11 and a half minutes of the first half, will be on the court for the second half. Wake Forest can't win without him. We'll know in the first four minutes how competitive Wake Forest is going to be in this second half. The coaches were trying to fire up the team in warm-ups leading up to this, the start of this second half, and I think Wake Forest has to come out with a lot of fire. They are down 16 points, and they have been pummeled the last 11 minutes of the first half. Kentucky with the first possession. Wall, Miller. Patterson, Cousins, and Bledsoe on the court. Same five that started the game. McFarland, Smith, Weaver, Aminu, and uh, Williams for Wake Forest. Down to eight on the shot clock from way outside. John Wall 
hits another three. Kentucky now five for 13 from three. Not a lot of weaknesses on this Kentucky team. L.D. Williams left alone on the baseline with a slam, his fourth point. But just having a meeting back on the floor. Kentucky has got to give a lot of defensive attention his way. That opens up some things for his teammates. Wake wasn't getting that with him out of the game. Well, as you said uh, Thursday night again tonight, there's not a lot of scoring power for Wake Forest. They've got to get the ball in deep. It's got to be in transition, or it's got to be something that Aminu can get. Wow, what a pass again. How did Wall thread that one through with the backhand? Cut the basket and the foul. Even when you think you've got him going at an angle that's away from the basket, he's able to just throw a little backhanded pass. That's just beautiful and a great catch by DeMarcus Cousins. Foul on Smith is second. Well, they've had trouble shooting free throws, but uh, Darius Miller with the offensive rebound and uh, Wall called from the backcourt where he had stationed himself. Four for 13 from the free throw line for Kentucky. They've not been a good free throw shooting team this year. Come up and fight in the tournament. Bledsoe. Hello. Door open. Anybody home? Four for him. Smith unable to score. And there's a foul, I believe, on Cousins. Well, just speed on speed. The speed of Bledsoe getting to the rim. On the left side on that last possession and then after the made field goal Ishmael Smith pushes that ball up the court so quickly Tony Woods back in for McFarland Wake Forest Second foul on Cousins Into Amino Patterson on him. This is a two You see the scoring prowess of Amino and how desperately his talent was missed Three and a half, 11 and a half minutes of that opening hand. That was a very difficult shot and a nice move. He step back dribble. Now 2-3 zone for Wake Forest trying to keep Kentucky out of the lane, which they have not been able to do. Inside, Cousins has it batted away, recovers. And slipping inside for another two is Darius Miller, and that equals his career high at Kentucky, 18 tonight. Nice little shot pick by Miller, but just a poor closeout by L.D. Williams. Usually a very reliable defender. And you're closing out to the shooter. You've got to tap that inside shoulder and make him go to the outside. You can't allow somebody to drive middle like L.D. Williams just allowed Miller to do. L.D. Williams backs out. John Wall flying off the ball. Smith with Bledsoe hawking him. Five, four. Smith inside, loses control, out of bounds to Kentucky. Well, Darius Miller has had his best ball game of the season. He's a shooter. You have to know where he is all the time. But he has knocked down shots from all over the floor and has complemented his shooting ability with his driving ability as well. And he had 18 points, his career high earlier this season against Arkansas. He's in prime position to set a new career high in the NCAA tournament. Seven for eight tonight. Bledsoe, who went eight for nine from outside the line Thursday night, hits his first this evening, and he's happy about that. Seven points for him. And the Kentucky Wildcats threatening to create a rout and maybe a party riot in New Orleans. Back in New Orleans, our tournament summary, Kansas' first number one seed to lose in the second round since Kentucky, upset by Mike Anderson's uh, UAB team. No SEC team, Sweet 16 a year ago. Well, Tennessee is in thus far this season. Amino inside, well off the mark. For every shot challenge, meanwhile, Kentucky shooting 72%. They've missed nine shots of 32 attempts tonight. Miller passing up a layup himself, serving it up for his teammate. We have just watched a clinic put on by Kentucky, an absolute clinic. Patrick Patterson, who hasn't had much uh, of an opportunity to score, 
So they decided let's uh, give the junior, the only junior that plays for Kentucky, a nice juicy slam. You know, we talk a lot about how young this Kentucky team is, and it is a very young team. But oftentimes what doesn't get discussed is the mental toughness this team has shown over the course of the season. When challenged, it has answered the bell almost every time. And Patrick Patterson holding that hand. When you dunk it that hard, I guess you can hurt your hand a little bit. Meanwhile, Cousins out and Orton in for Kentucky. You know, in a tournament where some older teams have come into games perhaps not prepared for a fight. Jeez, look at that. How hard he throws that down. The bandage on the finger to begin with appeared that took the, the blow on the rim. Woods gets one out of two for three points for Wake Forest. Wall sets up Orton. He has made some dazzling passes tonight. John Wall, the freshman of the year in the country, and maybe the player of the year. Of course, he's up for the Naismith and the Wooden Award. And while he's doing it on the offensive end, Eric Bledsoe's done a great job on the defensive end. Morales, Ishmael, Smith. Smith hasn't gotten anything in this game. Stewart can't hit. Woods gets the rebound. Tries to get inside. C.J. Harris. Stewart battles. Amino picks up the loose ball. Smith sets up Stewart. And out of bounds to Wake Forest. Timeout. Five minutes into the second half. Well, Kentucky has moved out this lead the first five minutes of the second half. And John Wall has been magnificent. His passing. Just incredible, finding open people when everything looks cut off. Seven assists to go along with 12 points for the freshman point guard. Amino inside, and a foul will be on Orton over the back on the rebound. You know, the many great players in the Kentucky Wildcat lore, and there's one of them, Pat Riley, back in the 60s. He makes some all Kentucky teams. He'd certainly make mine. Played for Adolph Rupp alongside Larry Connolly in 1966. Played for the national championship against Texas Western at Cole Fieldhouse, University of Maryland. There was that famous UTEP team with Don Haskins. Aminu able to save. Smith darting inside. Pretty pass. And Harry Stewart is the recipient of an easy goal. Larry Stewart is going to be an outstanding player before he's done. Just a freshman, he's athletic, he can shoot it. it. Shows you how freshmen mature at different rates. Some of these Kentucky freshmen are pretty far ahead. Wall jamming his way in, picks up the charge. We remind you tomorrow in 60 minutes, two of the best athletes in the world are identical Americans and quite extraordinary. Some of you may know, not know much about them. Terrific young men. It's all tomorrow night on 60 Minutes, only CBS. Uh, we said coming back from halftime, the first five minutes were going to tell us a lot about what Wake Forest had to challenge Kentucky, and Kentucky's moved out the lead. Kentucky came out, a bunch of freshmen. They have been perhaps the most mature team in the tournament thus far. Bledsoe with a quick pocket. They've been ready to play each game they've come out. The mature teams, when they play in the first round, they play somebody that they're expected to beat. And they absolutely hammered East Tennessee State. And they're absolutely hammering Wake Forest. There's been no doubt for this number one seed. Another great pass inside, and Orton has the basket. Interestingly, the, the 12 Cats have missed as many free throws as field goals. Is Smith unable to connect? Amino. And a blocking foul, uh, Kentucky. Big Daniel Horton, a 6'10", 255-pound freshman from Oklahoma City. He was recruited by Billy Gillespie to be Patterson's replacement. Now he sits behind DeMarcus Cousins. Well, John Calipari's really had to bring along this Kentucky team in a different way. And, uh, 
I saw something Thursday I've never seen a, at a first round side in an NCAA tournament. Came out for the first game, and Kentucky was on the floor using their practice time early in the morning. I've never seen that before. And I asked Calipari, have you ever done this before in all your years? And he said, no. Why is he uh, doing it? Well, he's got such a young team, he wanted to get them up and occupy their time and get them prepared to play. Get them out of bed. Yeah, huh? with an older team, you might not have to do that. But with a younger team, he's had to handle this team a little bit differently, and he's really done a masterful job. And in all my years, never seen that in a first-round side. <laughs> Foul before the shot, and then uh, Wall goes down heavily. Calipari, he went to Clarion College from point guard back in 1982. Here's he'll have 500 wins in the blink of an eye. He started the season with 445. John Calipari started his coaching career as a grad assistant to Larry Brown at Kansas. Let's up. <laughs> He's 6-1. Spectacular dunk by Bledsoe. Then he steals. It's a clinic. Hello, another. Oh, my. Sit back and watch a great team playing at their very peak. Calipari called him a buzzsaw when they beat East Tennessee State. This is the chainsaw. Ten for ten from the floor this half. And who says nobody's perfect? Ten for ten, Kentucky from the floor shooting this half. And racing out to a 66-37 lead. Now remember, Wake is the number nine seed, just to put it in perspective, against number one, Northern Iowa, number nine, against number one, Kansas, victorious earlier tonight. Now how do you, if you're John Calipari, how do you keep Kentucky motivated right now? You might, you might want to yell at him, say, you haven't gotten an offensive rebound this whole second half, and you miss the free throws. <laughs> Amino fouled. It'll go against Darius Miller, his third. Boy, the job that Eric Bledsoe has done, not only offensively in this game, but his defense on Ish Smith has been spectacular. I mean, Ishmael Smith, one of nine in this ball game, and this was a guy who did very well against a pretty good defensive team in, in Texas. And Bledsoe has absolutely shut off the Wake Forest senior. Amino, a good free throw shooter, misses that one. Out goes Miller. In comes Darnell Dodson, one of the better three-point shooters on this Kentucky roster. Not that they have any bad shooters, and certainly tonight they're all good. Two misses by Aminu. And Bledsoe seemingly always around the ball comes up with a loose ball. Tonight on the game, don't miss a new edition of 48 Hours Mystery. Inside John Wall, 11 for 11, and he wears that number. John Wall just going down into the post, taking a guard that doesn't usually guard in the post down and taking advantage of him. Some mole defense by Wake Forest here as they're disheartened, as they're being pounded pretty hard by this great Kentucky team. Amino fouled by Perry Stevenson, his first. Well, John Wall winning the guard comparison, but it has been Eric Bledsoe that has been guarding Ish Smith. Nino's missed three straight free throws. Harry Stewart out. L.D. Williams back in. Out goes Bledsoe and Stevenson. As John Calipari now going to exercise his bench, but <laughs> every, every player he brings out is so talented. DeAndre Liggins in again. And Dotson with Wall, Patterson, and Cousins. Kentucky's talented, but oh, they play together, don't they? There's a, a team that shares the ball. There's no selfishness on this team. Now there's a bracket here going to Syracuse, the Cornell Wisconsin game tomorrow. And the winner there will apparently play Kentucky in the Sweet 16. Well, Dino Gaudio's got a 30-point play in his playbook. This has been about as complete a performance 
as we have seen not only in this tournament but perhaps all season long. I mean, Wake Forest is not a bad basketball team and they're being drubbed. Patterson rebound LD Williams and then he loses the ball out of bounds oh my 12 to go here in New Orleans it's all Kentucky hey fellas you gots to take care of yourself yo lady ain't your mama women want a strong man and player you ain't strong when you're whining about Jay Billis all right Greg an exercise in excellence for the Kentucky Wildcats with uh, just under 12 minutes to go here in New Orleans, a 68-38 lead. Near perfect. Uh, Patterson missed that 10-footer on the baseline that ends the 10 for 10 shooting. Wall is short on that one. Amino comes up with it. First bad shot Kentucky's taken. That was challenged, and L.D. Williams blocked it. Ooh, a tough high kiss off the glass from Aminu. He's got 13. Really the only consistent scoring that Wake Forest has gotten in this game. Wake has been about score what 49-21 since Aminu picked up its third foul. There it is. You talk about perfect. How about Rupp Arena fans, Kentucky fans? Were they spoiled or what this year? Every game they went to, men or women, they won 35 and 0. <laughs> What have you done for us lately? <laughs> so no wonder they're enthusiastic about the chances of their two teams in the tournament. Well, they've been all over this town. Kentucky fans came out in force for this one. I've seen shirts around town that have said Blue Orleans. <laughs> Amino had his own missed shot and saves it for L.D. Williams. And a foul over the back. That's going to be on uh, Minu, I believe. Oh. No. No, it's going to be McFarland. This Wednesday on a special night of Survivor, both tribes have to send somebody home. Who will it be? Or whom will it be? A new Survivor on a special night, Wednesday. Only CBS. That's uh, the third foul on McFarland. 70 to 40. 12 for 14 shooting after uh, Kentucky went 12 in a row. Liggins for three. He bricked that one, and uh, Smith has it knocked away out of bounds to Wake Forest. Kentucky in New Orleans, Blue Orleans it is. They've had great success down here. For that matter, almost everywhere they played. Six straight postseason games they've won here. In the Big Easy, and this one has been big and relatively easy for Kentucky. The outside jumper by Williams is too long, and Liggins brings it down. So you look at Bledsoe when Smith is guarding him, they're about the same height, but Bledsoe much more powerful. Longer arms, that is a good-looking freshman guard. His wingspan is 6'7", stands at 6'1". Cousins. Oh, McFarland takes him down. But that's an intentional foul and should be called as such. There's some frustration on the part of the Wake Forest players and Chase McFarland in particular, but you know, there's no call for that. <laughs> Boy, he just uh, strafed them. And John Calipari out there on the court to argue on behalf of uh, his team and his player. Now, you can claim that's a play on the ball, but it's not. I mean, that's a wild swing. As yet, no official signal as it being a flagrant foul. Well, it didn't look like they called that, but that's a wild swing. That's not a play on the ball. And I think it looked like the officials called some sort of technical afterward. Daniel Orton pushes, and there's just a little too much 
little too much going on there, but there was a technical foul called. I'm just not sure it was called on. Somebody, the referees made the technical foul signal. Michael Reed, Kelly Self, and David Hall sorting it out, and they'll go to the monitor to see the evidence, and it's not going to bode well for Chase McFarland of Wake Forest. Well, they can go back and review the play, and they can call it a flagrant or intentional if they choose to. McFarland appeared to be guessing that Cousins was going to go up with him. He didn't. He stayed down. And McFarland committing himself came over the top with a that slap in the face. This is trying to keep uh, Calipari back in his box and the way the officials are supposed to handle this two officials uh, go two officials go to the monitor and one official make sure that, that everybody else doesn't you know nothing happens behind the officials you don't want all three officials watching you know watching TV when there are problems going on behind so both coach, coaches called to the conference of Vino Gaudio in his third year at Wake Forest he knows the news isn't going to be good here well, it might wind up being a double tech. I mean, Daniel Orton was the first in there after the action and pushed someone. So intentional is the call on McFarland. So free throws and the ball for Kentucky and the technical on Orton for uh, coming in intentional to foul protect uh, his teammate. McFarland for Lake Forest. That's his third personal. 14 foul. An intentional foul is two shots and the ball. Number 33, Daniel Orton for Kentucky. That's his fourth personal. Fourth foul on Orton. And Kentucky's 18 foul. Made some contact and uh, that gives him his fourth. I've never seen that before. John Calipari just screamed at DeMarcus Cousins, make the free throw after he missed the first one. <laughs> well, he hasn't been uh, that successful at the line. He got one out of two, which gives him one for seven tonight. Here are the technical free throws. C.J. Harris, the best free throw shooter for this Wake Forest team, one of the best in the ACC. On the season, Harris shooting almost 84%. But he, like Wake Forest, have trouble at uh, two for four tonight from the line. That's a bad night for him. So 71-41, 9 39 to go. McFarland stays in the game. And so does Cousins. Who had the brilliant night of the victory against Texas? Feeds a beautiful pass to CJ Harris, and Harris now with nine. Pretty back cut by Harris. Dotson and Liggins off the bench now in the lineup, along with Stevenson for Kentucky. Bledsoe and Cousins, the two starters, still there. And Cousins. Muscles up and up. 73 43 13 for him. Amino is fouled. Stevenson got him. Marcus Cousins is such a difficult matchup inside. 6 11. He's got to weigh 280 pounds, but he's nimble. He's got great feet, can spin, get to the rim. He's not a, a great leaper, but he's just so strong. Amino three for six from the line. Well, just a sneaking a peek ahead to the Syracuse region then. It'll be either Cornell or Wisconsin to play Kentucky. Who's, who matches up best or better against this Wildcat team? Well, Wisconsin is bigger uh, than Cornell is. And they have some more high-level experience. But Cornell is an interesting matchup. Both of them are going to be difficult because they could slow the tempo and reduce the amount of possessions in the game. And that can be a little bit frustrating for a young team. 
you know, in a, in a lower possession game, a team that's young like Kentucky may try to speed the game by taking quick shots, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do. You try to speed it defensively. Oh, Cousins takes it away, no foul, and lays it in as he barrels right through C.J. Harris. 15 for him. That's seven for seven from the field. And there you can see some of the, uh, it's hard to call a guy 6'11", 280 nimble, but he does, he is very light on his feet for that size. Into Aminu. Twisting, blocked by Cousins, gets it back. Not there, and Cousins rips down another rebound, and he is fouled. Just knocking that ball away from C.J. Harris with the left hand. You, know, you don't see many 6'11 guys doing that. And DeMarcus Cousins has had one of his better games in the last three or four. He's been a little bit quiet his last two against Mississippi State and Texas. But in this one, excuse me, not Texas East Tennessee State, but in this one, well, he has really done a good job. And let's talk a little bit about him managing his emotions. And, and he has done a great job of that in this game. That's Dobson for three. A little too strong. And Cousins unable to hit that. Wake Forest runs it out. Smith. And it's Ty Walker into the game, the seven foot sophomore from Wilmington, North Carolina. 7.31 to go here in New Orleans. It's all KY. Welcome back to New Orleans. Stick in for Jay Billis. A look at our game summary. 68% Kentucky shooting in this game to pile up a 75 to 44 lead. And they played great defense at the other end. Amino, once back in action, has piled up 14 points to lead the Deacons. And Darius Miller matching his career high with 18 tops for Kentucky. Ty Walker. has a standing height of 9-5 at the line. He's played in only a handful of games this year, just 12 points, two for three from the line. So a rare visit for him. Thirty-point advantage for Kentucky. The thoroughbreds have been all about it. Gets from the bluegrass country. in with a steal. Used that long wingspan and then Smith trouble with his uh, footing. Fans wanted traveling in Kentucky. And a long bomb from Ari Stewart. He did hear that one out for three. He has five points in the game. He had 11 points against Texas. Streaky shooter. Had a chance to be really good. Ligans thought he was grabbed. Side. Cousins with a jump hook. Not much that Ty Walker could do about that. 17 for Cousins, as high as the year 27. Another rebound for Big DeMarcus. He has a total of eight of those. And you project DeMarcus Cousins out over a 40 minute game. His 40 minute stats would be 27 points and over 17 rebounds per game. He is one productive big guy. In our earlier game, Baylor survived a second half comeback by Old Dominion. They'll play St. Mary's in the regional Sweet 16. Nice pass by DeMarcus Cousins, but maybe too much on it. Well, the top seeds uh, embarrassed today. Out they go, Villanova to St. Mary's. Kansas loses to Northern Iowa. Washington 11 seed takes out the Lobos in New Mexico. I don't think that's going to happen in that Wake Forest game with Kentucky, wherever that one's being played. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's an impressive thing about this Kentucky team. And they came fully prepared for what they were facing. And that's the sign of a mature team, even though they've got a bunch of freshmen on the floor. 
they have played beyond their years in this tournament. And that, that speaks very well of this team. LD Williams on the drive is fouled. Harry Stevenson has his fourth foul. LD Williams to the line, averaging just under nine a game. The senior from Four Bush High School in Winston-Salem area. Looking for his fifth point. Well, Monday in a city this hot, you're going to get burned. Monday's most watched drama is all new. Catch CSI Miami Monday, only CBS. Ramon Harris into the game for the first time. A starter a year ago, the senior from Anchorage, Alaska, wears number five. Williams hits both free throws, and he comes out as Tony Woods returns for Wake Forest. I think we were talking about the potential next opponent for Kentucky in the East region, either Wisconsin or Cornell. And both those teams can control the tempo of the game. And in the NCAA tournament, oftentimes these games, games are half-court games because in postseason play, it is much easier to slow a game down than it is to speed one up. And both Wisconsin and Cornell present a unique challenge. Wisconsin more experienced, a little bit bigger than Cornell, but Cornell is the best three-point shooting team in the country. Really? In the yes. country? Unable to slam it home was Ligon at the other end. It's E.J. Henry and Tony Woods taps in the miss. Five for him. Tony Woods' specialty is offensive rebounding. <laughs> was he hiding down there? Did no one see him? DeMarcus Cousins kind of shrinking that huge body of his, and then the lob and up he erupts to slam home another. Nine for ten, but they've been short range. Most all of the shots delivered by Cousins tonight. You fall asleep on defense, and Kentucky has taken advantage of everything. And this has been a complete a tail kicking as we've seen in this tournament. Liggins with a foul is second. Double bonus. Harris at the line. Only freshman, true freshman in the lineup for Wake Forest. He uh, follows Chris Paul and Josh Howard, Winston-Salem products that have stayed at home to play at Wake Forest. DeMarcus Cousins with a hand from the Wildcat faithful. Daniel Orton replace him. Darius Miller also out. 18 points in the game, 16 in the first half. Workman-like performance for DeMarcus Cousins. Ishmael Smith back in for Wake Forest. Whatever chance Wake Forest had in this game was out the window as soon as Al Farouk Aninu picked up his third foul. Game was tied 19-19. 11-39 left to go in the first half. And Kentucky just exploded after that. Eric Bledsoe, the only starter still in, on the floor for Kentucky. And the tie-up, Ramon Harris and L.D. Williams. Arrow points to the men from Winston-Salem. It's interesting that John Wall, the young freshman star for Kentucky, is, what would you say, Raleigh to Winston-Salem, about an hour, 15-minute drive? Yep, about that. And Wall uh, out of uh, Word of God High School in Raleigh, North Carolina, 2009, McDonald's for America. A lot of people thought that Wall would wind up at Baylor. Clark into the game. Just Gary in, Gary Clark. Clark from Sarasota, Florida, the junior, averaging three a game. It's his first shot. Timeout in Nolan. Well, looking ahead in a couple of weeks, we'll have the semifinal and finals of the tournament in Indianapolis. And the next Thursday, it begins April 8th through the 11th. The Masters, a tradition unlike any other. The Masters from Augusta National here on CBS. I just can't make myself sound as smooth as Jim Nance. I want to. I really want to. My heart's in it. I, I, get, think, I think you do okay. Yeah, just to embrace <laughs> those words. A tradition unlike Gary Clark a little two hands on the offensive player and that's a foul in anybody's rule book and immediate timeout 
79-56 Kentucky. In Texas. And Bledsoe has absolutely shut off the Wake Forest senior. All right, thank you, Greg. At the line, one of the reserves for, well, no, this is actually a starter in there. Darius Miller is back on the court. And that'll give him his uh, career high, 19th point. Faces uh, drawing longer and longer in what might have been for Wake Forest. I'm not sure many teams in the country could have beaten this Kentucky squad the way they play tonight. That would certainly be a tremendous performance. But especially without Al Farouk Aminu, there's no chance. Well, that was really time and arm behind the back, wasn't it? When he picked up three fouls so quickly. Top score, top rebounder for Wake Forest. Miller. Smith racing to the other end. To Aminu. It'll count. And one. Average 16 on the season. That's about where he is right now. Really a great athlete. Explosive athletic. He can run the floor. One thing he needs to continue to improve is his perimeter shooting ability. He's only a sophomore. Well short again. He hadn't shot free throws well. Four for nine. Uh, this is. Well it's been a clinic in most aspects for Kentucky. The one place it hasn't been. Clinic like has been at the free throw line for both teams. There's been a lot of a lot of missed free throws. It's, it's hard to keep your concentration when you're blowing somebody out like this. Wake will lose Smith, McFarlane, L.D. Williams, and Weaver. They're all seniors. Most NCAA tournament wins. Carolina with 102, but of course won't pick up any. Added victories in this championship. Kentucky with the win tonight has 100. They lost two because of probation. Will back one season. UCLA had 94. Not in the tournament this year. A really an amazing year where great programs like UConn and other great. <laughs> Just can't stay in front of Eric Wetzel. There's not a whole lot of resistance on the part of Wake Forest now. They know the outcome. And I don't think have worked as hard defensively as they did the first seven minutes of the game. You know, when programs like Indiana, North Carolina, UCLA, UConn, Arizona aren't in the tournament. I mean, this is this is a very different year in college basketball. Daniel Orton commits his fifth foul. He leaves with six points. There's a man uh, coming off the bench to spell DeMarcus Cousins, who as a freshman would probably start in almost every team in the country. Well, Daniel Orton's got a nice future ahead of him. He's a fine young player that after he got in better physical condition, really started to blossom. Try Walker on the line is his second point of the night. Well, Kentucky racked up. 100 points in the victory Thursday night against East Tennessee State, a 29-point win. They currently lead by 23 with 2.34 left. And Calipari going to his walk-ons in deep reserves. That's John Hood into the game, number four. He's a 6'6 freshman from Madisonville, Kentucky. And Josh Harrelson also in the game. Josh is a senior from St. Charles, Missouri, 6'10". He wears number 55. Kentucky trying to burn some clock. Beautiful ball handling. And, oh, denied as Walker up. It was it Woods that slapped that one away. And that was Walker. He got up quickly. Harrelson with a chance. And finally the basket. Good. From deep in the corner off the side of the board and Darius Miller collects it. Uh, 
cheer from the Kentucky fans as they uh, see yet another Mark Krebs get off the bench and he'll play. Uh, we can do some business. Obviously, Kentucky is on its way. Sweet 16. Will it be Cornell or Wisconsin? You'll see that tomorrow here on CBS. That's the East region. Play will be in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. And I'm not sure what has been more impressive in this game. Kentucky's offense, which was really outstanding and very efficient, or its defense. I, I, I thought Kentucky's defense from start to finish was really outstanding, and especially, I would say Eric Bledsoe would be the defensive MVP for the job that he did from the opening tap on Ishmael Smith. Took him totally out of the game. Krebs just misses the three. Hood denied behind the back pass. Ramon Harris. Oh. Harrelson slams it in. How about that? And now the starters, they love to see the kids that have so little playing time enjoy some of the celebration. Walker having trouble in the lane. No three second call. Walker gets it back. Ari Stewart is blocked by Harrelson. Oh, 47 seconds to go. John Hood with a terrific save. What a nice play by the freshman. And then Harrelson, nobody boxes him out. He had a couple misses before. He wasn't going to miss that one. About seven second difference in the clocks. And Kentucky and their great Blue Legion of fans from the Bluegrass State can start making their travel plans to go to Syracuse. Krebs locked again. Ty Walker cleaning house down there. Advanced to the Sweet 16, first time since 2005 as they rack up their 100th NCAA tournament win tonight. Krebs for three. <laughs> Final seconds tick away. Finally a shot by Harris. Not there. Rebound Harrelson and that's it. Kentucky to the Sweet 16, 90 to 60. Greg? Nick Enberg, thank you. A minute 39 remains on this day three. Of How sweet it is. UK basketball is in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament after a decisive second round win over Wake Forest, the final 90 to 60, and combined with Kansas losing today, suddenly there's a new kid on the block as the number one team of the country and the favorite to win the national championship, and that is the Kentucky Wildcats. Hello again, everybody. I'm Fred Cowgill. Welcome to WLKY's continuing coverage on the road to Indianapolis's Final Four, the Kentucky Wildcats. A huge win tonight over the Wake Forest Demon Deacons now puts them on the way to Syracuse and the East Region semifinals against either Cornell or Wisconsin. Let's show you how it happened as we show you the great highlights from the first half. We go to the videotape. In the first half, UK. In fact, I'm going to hit the brakes right now. I'm told that we already have live coverage of the news conference with UK. They've already come to the podium very quickly. Let's go to it live on WLKY. I want you to be your best. I want you to visualize what it means when you're playing your best, and that's what you're striving to do. How can I help you be your best? And um, they're having fun out there, which is what we want, and as long as they keep having fun, playing harder than that other team, just enjoy playing, um, we'll be fine. It'll, we'll have our chances. Doesn't mean you're automatically marching, but at least you have an opportunity. Okay. There it is. There it is. Pass it down to Mark. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started with questions for the student athletes. If you'll please raise your hand, uh, give us time to get a mic to you, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll start right here. Oscar. Darius, you look like you were back in Mason County. What went off to that? Um, really, I just try to play aggressive like Coach has been telling me. And um, a lot of times they help off me and a few of the other wings, to, and that provides lanes for like us to get to the lane. I mean, they're helping off because of – John, Eric, and DeMarcus and them are a big part of the team. So really, most of the time, they focus on us, and um, I just try to help them out. Other questions for the Kentucky student athletes? Megan, we have one in the back. Let's go. We'll take that one. Roger Rubin from the New York Daily News. Uh, for all three players, 
What was your initial reaction to hearing that Kansas had been upset? Uh, we weren't allowed to know what was the results of that game, and we were told to focus on our own game. No. I made him turn the TV off. <laughs> Said, think about our game. Don't worry about that game. And then when they went out, I was saying, wow. <laughs> Other questions in the middle of the room? To Marcus, I, what, I know you were prepared for anything in games like this, but I wonder what went through your mind there in the starting lineups. And then when you went down in the second half and everybody was kind of gathering around you, you popped up smiling just just to talk about your approach to those things. Uh, I mean, I knew, I mean, he was coming out with articles saying how he was going to try to get in my head. I was reading it, and I was just preparing myself for a battle today because I knew he was coming out. I knew what his intentions were coming into the game. And when we came out to shake hands and he didn't shake my hand, I knew he was already starting. So I just prepared myself for it. Take one here at the second row. Yeah, for Darius and Demarcus, um, uh, now that you do know that uh, Kansas lost, there are going to be a lot of people talking about you guys as the favorite in this tournament. Does that does that put any uh, any extra pressure on you guys at all? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with Demarcus. I don't think that adds any pressure. Um, as long as we come out and play the best we can, that's all we can control. Other questions? <laughs> Back to Oscar. For all three of you, when Cribs hit the three-pointer, <laughs> talk about that. That was the best play of the game in my eyes. Uh, we just treat Cribs like we treat everybody else. I mean, he a brother to us, and to him going and knock down the three is uh, we just got a joint out of it. Uh, I agree with both of them. I mean, I think everybody jumped up in the air, and uh, everybody was happy for him when he hit the three. I mean, that, that means a lot for everybody on the team. Other questions for the student athletes? OK. You guys are welcome to head back to your dressing room. I didn't know you had nine rebounds. How about that? <laughs> wow. Thank you, guys. At this time, we'll take questions for Coach John Calipari. If you, again, if you please raise, his, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. We'll start here on the front row. Uh, let's get the same question to you that DeMarcus answered in a one-word answer. Uh, Kansas losing and obviously your big win today. You're obviously the overwhelming favorite now for most people. I don't know if we're the overwhelming favorite. Everybody was picking us to lose today, being a tough game. And they were also saying we'd be the first number one out. So how do they change those talking heads overnight? With one game? Come on. We're still a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. Uh, our second NCAA tournament game, they've never played in any other games. The guys that we're playing that have never played in it. So all we're going to worry about is us. Um, we're going to get home, take a day off tomorrow, practice on Monday and Tuesday, and, and head on up to uh, uh, Syracuse and uh, get ready. The, the people that are going to be in that region, it's going to be ridiculous. You're going to have four teams that have, they're good enough, all four, to go win the national title. Cat, we have one toward the back, on the, right on the end. <clears throat> John, could you explain when you decided to use DeAndre uh, to slow-ish and, and what, what you thought the effect of it was? Well, we were going to have three guys guard him. 